today on Divorce Court. John and I started try to start a family. It's been a really difficult road. We went through a couple miscarriages and it kind of like messed us up emotionally. Money is our number one issue. She likes to live the lavish lifestyle, so I try to give her that because I was in love with her and, you know, threw us off financially. Jonathan likes to accuse me of sleeping with a lot of different people, um, but that's not true. She cheated on me in the past and it changed ever since. It tears me apart that we're not on the same page anymore. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And I'm not going to get shamed on myself. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Jonathan Chavez and Kelly Condori. The two of you have been together for five years, married for two and a half, but you do not want to be married anymore. You don't have any children together, but Ms. Condori, you do have a child from a previous relationship. You are, again, getting a divorce, and Mr. Uh, Chavez, you are seeking uh, over $8,000 for a number of things that you say she owes you, and we will talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Mr. Chavez, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today? Well, we're here today because um, I, I just want to close a chapter in my life mm -hmm. uh, with this marriage. Um, I do want to divorce mm -hmm. my wife of two and a half years, um, one of my best friends for 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it started back then. Uh, we met back in high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cute little chunky kid walks into cafeteria, sees a beautiful girl. Um, I was infatuated from the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, even though I tried to play it like I wasn't. Um, she got to be cool. She definitely caught it on, though. I was sweating profusely <laughs> uh, the moment she grabbed my arm. For a while, you know, late teens and early adulthood, uh, we were friends with benefits mm -hmm. for a while. We never really solidified a relationship. We never really went out like a long period of time. But what happened was uh, I was in a relationship for four years. Uh, we had, had a little falling out. Um, she like basically threw me under the bus. And now, now, which she are you talking about? The one you were the my relationship? Wife, my wife, okay. My wife at the time, mm -hmm. she wasn't my wife at the time. I was with, in a relationship with well, another Ms. girl. Ms. Condori uh, over Ms. Condori. there. Okay. Correct. She basically told my girlfriend at the time everything that I was trying, you know, to, to contact her, maybe rekindle something. Mm -hmm. And we cut ties. I cut ties with her because my girlfriend at the time, like I said, I was four, four years with her. Um, she just didn't want me speaking to her. So I gave her that benefit of the doubt, sure. and I cut ties. That relationship ended short after, and about a year out of that relationship, I noticed that she had, she had moved to Virginia, and I noticed she came back to New York. Um, she was single, so obviously, an old thing, I, I contacted her, we hung out, and we, you know, we, had, we, were, we were intimate. Mm -hmm. um, we were intimate for about a week. <laughs> <laughs> we were intimate for about a week, and, um, Things got a little more serious, you know. Uh, I've kind of got more serious. Mm -hmm. I have uh, more feelings for her. I cared more. Mm -hmm. um, you I, caught feelings, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> basically. And uh, we got together. And a year into our relationship, she ended up leaving and cheating on me. And I didn't see her for a week. I didn't hear from her for a week. I saw a post on social media that she was with family members of her ex, uh, okay. um, siblings. So I, I, I knew personally that she had slept with him. When um, did you find out that while she was gone, she was sleeping with some other guy? The later end of the week. So uh -huh. like Thursday, she, she left like on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I would say by like Thursday, Friday night, I knew she was already hanging out with the guy, which was an ex. Let's talk to Ms. Condora for a moment here. Ms. Condora, is that true? Somewhat. <laughs> Will you tell me what actually happened? Because well, it sounds pretty bad so far. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, he, like he mentioned, he was in a relationship with uh, somebody else. And his family, when I came into the picture, his family did not like me. They basically saw me as... The side was, chick. Yeah. They, and they, they all basically gave me the cold shoulder, the nasty looks, the nasty remarks. Well, can I ask you something, Ms. Yes, Kedora? What did you expect if you the side piece? Ma'am... <laughs> What did you expect, ma'am, your reception to be? That No, that was between us. Nobody really knew about our situation at all. Uh, the family just... Oh, that's just because you were young and don't know no better. Mamas know. No, no, I no. Know, I know, I you know, know which women my sons bring around and who's doing what No, ma'am, it was, it was never like that. <laughs> no, ma'am. 
No, ma'am, it was it was never like that. Uh, his family just grew attached to his ex, um, and they would just naturally assume that they were gonna be together forever. Right. So when I came into the picture, I was somebody brand new, and they they just told him like, "You're moving on too fast. It's just been nine months since they broke up." So. He obviously we didn't care. We still like kept pushing on. Right. I, um, but it was a whole year of his ex being in the picture. We lived only right above his mother's house, so his ex would come to to the mother's house to family events, family parties. That's how entwined she was in our lives. Mm -hmm. And she she. But weren't weren't you sleeping with him while he was dating her? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's ma'am. That honestly, that is not my problem. That was I. That was between them and their relationship. And I, no, I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't sleeping with him. I wasn't sleeping with him. I, I beg to differ. He, I beg to differ. I wasn't sleeping with you. You were trying to sleep with me, and I she beg, caught you. I slept with you at least twice during my relationship. I didn't know you were still with her though. So it was in the beginning. I, that fall like, I didn't know. I, end. we were in a, our sexual relationship wasn't, hey, how was your life? How's stuff with your mom, with your, with your wife? No. He literally was like, I send her home, we broke up, and I was like, okay, fine. We could do us, I guess. But I, he never really told me his situation with his ex at all during the times that we were messing around. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is way before. I'm talking about in a relationship. No, in, I'm, our, I'm, 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 I'm in, our, in our first year alone, mm -hmm. His family would attack me, his family disrespected me, his friends didn't like me, his friends disrespected me. And every time I would ask him about, like I would tell him, like your family's doing this, he'll be like, don't talk crap about my family, that's my family. And, it, and he wouldn't listen that. You were how, being hurt. Yeah, like your family is hurting me, your family is treating my son like an outcast. Is because... this is when you were dating or yes, when you married? Yes, this is a year of us dating. A year of just dating and yes. they, they weren't accepting yeah, of your son and, and, and all of that. And I got, a, it's yeah, a, I, I understand that part of the story. I wanted you to finish that up, but then I want to get to the part where the you cheating. explained to me that leaving town for yes, a week and not Yes, that's what I'm getting at too, ma'am. If you're telling me that you're gonna go see your cousin. Who lives with the, with the guy that you, that she's thinking about working things out with. And I see these messages and I see what you, what you tell him. You did it while I was at work. You took my money to pay for the bus ticket. And then you, you went over there to, to go be with him. That's what I felt. So Ms. Condori, why don't you tell me how the relationship with his family progressed and then end with the story about you leaving for yeah. a week. Well, it got worse and within that year it got really worse and it, it, it affected me a lot because it just, they, they showed it to my son. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the whole... The disdain, yeah, the, the distance dislike. and everything, yeah. yeah. So he would also show his indiscretions with my son too. Like he'll try to keep away from him because he didn't want to get too involved with somebody else and have that separation again. Right. So for a whole year, I've been going. I, I, I'm seeing this, and this um, is the whole year that you're dating. Yes, that we're okay. dating as boyfriend and girlfriend, living together as boyfriend and girlfriend. So how long? Were you going together before you started living together? Two months. So, Ms. Condori, get me to the point where you left. Well, at this point, I'm feeling confused. I already have commitment issues as it is. Mm -hmm. um, so, I was not in a good position. We just finished getting into a fight about his, his family, and he wasn't realizing how I felt at all. So, yeah, I went to meet up with my cousin. Mm -hmm. My cousin happened to be hanging out with my ex. I stayed there for a week, came back, and um, I told him what happened. I mm -hmm. told him how I felt, and I told him that even though he did try, wanted us to still stay together, I told him I wasn't where I was at. I wasn't, I didn't know what I, what I wanted, and I was confused, so we took a three month, we broke up for three months. Um, we still lived together, but I wasn't... You guys weren't together. Yeah, together. we weren't together. He was doing his thing. He was dating other people. He slept with somebody else. And um, I was I, sleeping with you I, for the most part. Do you have a different uh, view or recitation of the events that occurred definitely when she got do, back? Definitely do. Tell I, me what they are. Before she left originally, um, I didn't want her to go because I knew her ex was there. I knew she was still speaking with him. I, I've, I've read messages. We were re really open. She could look at my phone, I could look at hers. 
but occasionally she wouldn't delete the things that she needed mm -hmm. to delete, which is telling the guy, hey, you know, maybe we can work it out before leaving. So if you're telling me that you're going to go see your cousin. Who lives with the, with the guy that you, that she's thinking about working things out with. And you, and I see these messages and I see what you, what you tell him, I'm not going to want you to go and you go anyways. And you don't do it, you don't do it um, maturely. You did it while I was at work. You took my money to pay for the bus ticket. You took, you know, you, you know what I mean? Like, and then you, you went over there to, to go be with him. That's what I felt. And, I, and I've never got that closure. She's never given me a straight answer of, yeah, you know what? I was trying to work it out with him because of all the, the, the mishaps I that got we you. had. I got you. Let, let, let me do this. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to that, but I also want you to discuss. My understanding is that your, fighting, your fights about these matters are so destructive that it contributed to the end of this marriage, and I want to talk about that. We argue about everything. It, it's, it, it's with him, his anger, it's literally tip it and he will go off. And he, yeah, and he has called me a piece of crap. And it's not just a piece of crap. It's you're grimy, you're spiteful, B word, you're ungrateful, you're unappreciated. I want to talk about the way you guys fight. But before that, Mr. Chavez accused you of wholesale ratchetness in the manner in which you dealt with this other guy. I want to give you an opportunity to respond about the things he said about the way you did it. Did you use his money and? To, to go down there and all that kind of stuff. No, ma'am, I didn't use his money to buy the tickets at all. Um, actually, the only thing I did do was take $50 from him, and that's about it. That's about it, but yeah. it, the rest of it you paid for on your own. Yeah, so I don't know what he's talking about. It's literally a dollar fifty cents in mega bucks. Mr. Chavez, you say that she's destructive and angry and Absolutely. tears stuff up. Give, give me an example of All right, of so there was one happens. time that we were arguing, and it was always, it's always usually about a f another female in the picture or whatnot, and we had a, a shelf set, like a little shelf system, mm -hmm. where we had a, we went to a wedding and she made, um, she made a, she took a vase and put all the pictures of the wedding and it was, it was a nice Beautiful, ornament, yeah. a nice memory for us um, as a family. We had pictures on there, you know, old picture frames that, that we've had for a while now. And she literally came out arguing and she flipped it. Everything broke everywhere. She tends to throw cups. She tends to throw her phone. And she's just very uh, vulgar with her, with her, with her talking to me. She calls me a, a, a piece of crap all the time, uh, I, I, a fat piece of crap, to be mm. honest. Um, because I've always been big. It doesn't I, bother me. I'm from New York. Mm, Snacks are for lie. free. Mm -hmm. um, it's what it is. I've, okay. I've been. I got gotcha. you, Ms. Condori. What do you have to say about the, the nature of your conflict? I've never called conflict. him any of. I've never called him any of those names. Actually, in fact. Um, He's the one that's extremely verbal. He's the one that actually... We argue about everything. It, it's, it, it's with him, his anger, it's literally tip it and he will go off. Completely. And he, yeah, and he will... It's not... I, I only call him a piece of crap because he has done it so many... He has called me that so many times already that it has pushed me to the point that that's if he true. doesn't care, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to care neither. And it's not just a piece of crap. It's you're grimy, you're spiteful, B-word, you're ungrateful, you're unappreciative, you, you don't Those do I will, anything. Those I will agree to. But yeah. the other but, ones... Mr. Shepard, just take, take, a, take, a, take a step back. Usually both people are at least participating a bit in the foul words and, and, and the Absol ugly absolutely, language. But so I don't, I don't, do you own that you get angry as well? Yeah, yeah of course. Obviously, and you're yes. yelling and hollering and everybody's acting a fool. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, you absolutely. gotta own it. All right. You're right. <laughs> you, you gotta own it. Okay. I want to move now onto something I think is a very deep and difficult story for you to tell. There was a miscarriage and a great deal of damage done to the relationship in the wake of that miscarriage, and I want to talk about that. Ms. Condori, I'm going to ask you to tell me about what happened with respect to the miscarriage and how his and his family's response burdened or hurt you. We actually had three miscarriages. We've been trying to have a family for a year, Jonathan doesn't have any kids. I know that's his main goal. That has been his goal since he was 16 years old. Um, I had the IUD for five years. I took it off, and people usually tell you that you get pregnant immediately. So we kind of held on to that. But every month, 
I would get my period and it would be a huge disappointment. And um, he didn't realize it, that it took a toll on me because I would get it and he would just be like angry about it, that I wasn't pregnant. That's not true. So it would make me feel worthless. It would make me feel like I'm not doing something right. We got pregnant the first time. He jumped the gun, told everybody. Yeah, um, we were only two weeks. His family didn't take it as... As a positive. As a they positive, were happy. yeah. But we, we, we ended up having the miscarriage a week later after the, we made the announcement. Um, the second time, actually, we were three months pregnant, and um, we made the announcement. And a week later, we lost the baby again. Ms. Condori, I am so sorry. So very, very sorry. Mr. Chavez, were you supportive? And I'm, go I'm gonna say something before I say this. Oftentimes, guys come in here when a woman gets a miscarriage and can't understand why she's, well, get over it. It's, it's a process that just didn't complete and don't understand the depth and the breadth of her grief. Were you supportive? Yeah, I, I was. I was. I was very helpful. You know, I made sure she was comfortable. I made. I mean, we fought a lot, but it was more a, a, of accusations at first. He really wasn't supportive. Mm -hmm. A week later, after I had my miscarriage of three months, he. We were arguing, and he left because I kicked him out. I guess another uh, one of those moments, and he started adding other females, looking at other females' Facebook a week after my miscarriage. That was, that was after the second yes, one. Yes, it was. It was after the second one. No, it was, one. is that I'm talking about well, the well, second well, miscarriage? Well, whether, well, whether, which, whatever miscarriage it was, how come you looking at other women a week Absolutely. after she lost your baby? Absolutely. Um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like... Um, I probably did it out of... just to get her angry because she was kicking me out all the time. She she was literally and it wasn't I was kicking going it me. wasn't it wasn't kicking me out at at eight eight in that in the evening or where I could find somebody she she would pick an argument with me and kick me out at three four in the morning. I see what's going on here. I see where you're missing each other. I see where your your communication skills and your and your emotional your ability to contain and control your emotions is just is not there, but I want to take this opportunity to get a third eye on this because Ms. Condori contends, and, and, and rightfully so, that a lot of what goes wrong in your relationship is a function of a, her feeling alienated from her family. So I want to bring Karima Capert out here so she can speak on behalf of the family and maybe we can get some of that resolved. Ms. Capert, how are you? Hi. Good how are day. You? There is so much here. I've got a new witness. There is so much that everybody has to say, and I want to give this matter the attention that it deserves. So I'm going to adjourn it for today. We will reconvene tomorrow, get a fresh start, and we'll figure out what's going on. This matter is adjourned. She likes to live lavishly in the sense of like going out to eat or going to the movies. And I would do these things. I would do these things even when I, we didn't have sufficient amount of income. We closed the door and his brother then proceeded, as my son was sleeping in, in this apartment, proceeded to bang, kick the door multiple times because he was upset with what's going on. Her attitude was very, I've been in this picture. You guys just don't know who I am. I've been a high school sweetheart. You, you know, so that's when we were just like, we never heard of you. We don't know who you are. 